guys, welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you the places that you're going to see if you choose a 10-day tour to Egypt. This is one of the most popular trips promoted by different companies. The probability is that you're going to see exactly the same things that I saw are humongous. So in this video, I don't want to give you a few tips and a few recommendations to kind of follow and in that way you will have a beautiful, beautiful experience. The first thing that you need to know is that you need to obtain a visa. You can do it on two different ways. One from your country and you do it online, or the second one you can apply when you arrive to Egypt. The second one is really easy because it will take you just a minute, but for this you need to make sure that you have 25 American dollars with you. That is the only currency that they will take if you have Europe's pesos or whatever other currency, they will not take it. So if you're planning just to exchange uh, your money for their money, they will not even take it. So make sure that you have a 25 American dollars with you. After the airport, we end up going to a hotel located in the city of Giza. And I do recommend you to book a hotel here because you can find hotels that are located just in front of the beautiful pyramids. The next morning, finally, we decided to explore the pyramids and in order to get in, you had to pay $9 or 160 Egyptian pounds. Here you can do a few activities. One of them is visiting the tombs inside of the pyramids. If you want to see the biggest tomb, you had to pay $5 or the smallest tomb, you had to pay $2.50. So this place was unreal. What you see in the video is not even compared of what you are going to see and clearly feel. It was really really cool experience. And if you are going there, I do have a huge recommendation, something that is not too nice, but you will see a lot of people who sell things and they are quite aggressive. So just be aware and be a little bit careful of them because what happened to us, for example, was that one guy tried to sell us something, we didn't want to even touch it, the guy just threw the paper and obviously it was on the floor. If you grab it, most of the time they end up telling you you have to buy it and they are really pushy. So just walk around and try to avoid them so you will have a really nice experience in that place. Another activity that you can do here is renting a camel and that will cost you $15. Usually you can be between half an hour to an hour riding them on the middle of the desert. If you don't want to do that, you can literally just walk to the Sphinx and before entering this place, you can pass through the mummification room, which was quite amazing to see. Pretty much everything that you're going to see here is really, really big, one of the best experiences that I have. So please, if you're able to go to this place, for sure, do it. After this we decide to go to the museum and here you will find thousands of things to see that maybe it will take you years to look at them all. And from the pyramids to the museum it will take you between one hour to get there because the traffic is really really heavy in Cairo. And in order to get inside you had to pay 160 Egyptian pounds or 9 dollars. And something that is kind of annoying about this place is that they make you buy a photography ticket that costs 50 Egyptian pounds, that is like two dollars and a half. And sometimes happen if they catch you without the ticket, they make you erase the picture. And we experience in other places that when you don't have the ticket, they tell you that maybe you can give them just half of the money that you pay outside. Uh, but if you don't want to pay anything to anybody, uh, just tell them, no, I don't want a ticket and just do not take pictures inside. Take my hand, I'm gonna walk you through Ramadi, I'm gonna help you sleep tonight Kind of fierce, I'm like a child without his dreams at night I wanna help you dream tonight So I said I wouldn't spend a lot of 
time on you, a shame we'll never get to find. Okay, guys, so now let's get the real a little bit before we continue. So if your idea is maybe traveling by yourself, obviously you can do it, but I do recommend you to hire a tourist guide. You can do this in the hotel, but if you go to the pyramids and temples, there is nobody who can just show you around and tell you the stories. These temples and pyramids, they have so many details and so much information that it's really cool to understand why they were built. So for this reason, you need somebody who show you around. The other thing is because getting to places is really difficult and as I told you before, people kind of try to take advantage of you if they see that you are from other country. So about transportation, I didn't see even one good bus stop. These are the public buses there. And obviously if you speak the language, it will be easy for you to move around. If not, you can take a taxi from your hotel to the area that you want to walk and this way at least you may know how much exactly you have to pay from one area to another one and maybe if your idea is just renting a car and driving there I do not recommend you to do that at all the way that people from Cairo drives it's horrible every single car that I saw it has scratches and bumps uh, from the two days that I was there I didn't see one car without scratches it was unbelievable people just come this way, go this way and cross you it's horrible. Other thing that you need to know about Cairo is that it's really, really dirty. And the only area that I saw that it was clean was around the museum and where the really big hotels and maybe embassies are located. The rest of the area, it's extremely dirty. Basically, you are going to be walking on the street because all the sidewalks are full of garbage, sand, and even the cars are parking in the middle of the sidewalks. Okay guys, so now we can continue checking other places and my next stop is going to be in Saqqara. This is located 45 minutes from Cairo. So this is considered one of the burial grounds for the kings and nobles of the Old Kingdom. And in order to go in, you have to pay 75 Egyptian pounds. The beautiful thing about this place is that you're going to find the step pyramid of Djoser. I hope I'm pronouncing this well. And basically this is the first pyramid found. It has more than 5,000 years. If you compare them with the pyramids of Giza, they just have 3,000 years. Something cool about this place is that they still digging and finding a lot of burial areas. So it was quite interesting to be here. And something that you can do too is going inside of one of the tombs found in this area. They don't charge you to go in, but they don't allow you to take pictures. So I do recommend you to visit this tomb because it has so many details. And something really cool is that it's not related to religion. It's more related to the daily life of people here. It was really interesting to see this place. After this we end up going to the Memphis Museum which is located 5 minutes away from this location. In order to go in you have to pay four and a half dollars and maybe you would spend just 20 minutes exploring this place because it's not too big. The main thing here is just check the 28 meter long statue and obviously outside you will find a few extra statues here and there but it's not too impressive but still something interesting to do if you are in that area. Finally, the last part of my trip here in Cairo is basically visiting the Cal El Khalil Bazaar, which is one of the biggest markets here. Here you would find a lot of spices, metalwork, pottery, fabric, jewelry, and this is really touristic. And basically here you will find a lot of these things with really low prices comparing with other places. So now as a huge recommendation, when they see that you are from other country, they do try to put really high prices. So always you have to bargain and reduce the price. So if somebody offer you maybe 200 Egyptian pounds, so you can even reduce to the price uh, to 100 Egyptian pounds or even more. So uh, here you are always expected to negotiate the price. So always be aware of it and 
So people here is not too aggressive. It's pretty much really nice the way that they try to sell you things. They are really polite. Most of them speak different languages, um, which is really impressive. So it was a cool experience, a cool place to visit for sure. Now guys, after spending a couple of days in Cairo, we're moving to the amazing city of Aswan. And in order to get there, we need to take the overnight train, which is this. The overnight train has first, second and third class. Mostly the first and second class is used by tourists. You have to pay $80 if you are sharing the room and $110 if you want the room for yourself. And this is our bed. This is one and the other one. They give you fresh sheets, pillows, there is like a tiny sink here. Dinner and breakfast is included and usually after dinner is when somebody come and put the beds down. But the only bad thing about this train is that the bathrooms are dirty and the smell that the train has is a little bit moldy, but that's it. For the rest, it was really cool. So this is the amazing view in the morning, just 20 minutes before arriving to Aswan. The first thing that we did in Aswan was visiting the Philly Temple you need to pay $8 in order to get in. So the nice thing about this temple is that it's located in a small island and in order to get there you need to take a boat ride which the price is already included on the ticket. So the Philly Temple is dedicated to Isis, which was a protective goddess who used to use powerful magic spells to help people in need. You will find a lot of cats and in general the temple is really cool to see. So once again, if you are going to this place, I do recommend you to have a tourist guide because it has so many details and information that you need to know in order to truly understand the meaning of this temple. My next stop is in a Nubian village and for this you need to take a boat ride again because the little community is located in a, a small island so it will take you between 10 to 20 minutes to arrive to this location. Mixed emotions, tears, I'm not immune, I try. Stop. What you're going to notice is that there are kids in a surfboard and they usually grab the boat and start singing. Obviously, they expect a little bit of money when they finish. So it was quite interesting to see this. So now when you arrive to the Nobel village, somebody from that community will give you a tour of how the houses look inside and outside. And you will see a lot of color in most of the houses. What my tourist guide told us is that most of the community in this area, they have cockatiels as pets, so it's really normal for them just to have them in their houses. Finally, we ended up eating one of the most traditional uh, dishes from Nubian people, which was this. I do not remember the name, but it was quite different and still quite interesting to try. <laughs> My next stop is going to be Abu Simbel Temple. This is the most beautiful temples of all, for me at least. 
and in order to get in you have to pay ten dollars so now the only problem with this temple is that it's located three hours away from Aswan so the drive is a little bit heavy but it's totally worth it if you need to take pictures inside you need to buy a ticket so just make sure that you have a budget for that too temple was built by Ramses II and something that he did was building a second temple beside his dedicated to his wife. My next activity that I did was sleeping in a feluca which was this big boat and I just love it, it was a really really cool experience. So what they usually do is that they prepare lunch for you and after lunch you will be sailing on the Nile River for a couple of hours. It's where it all begins Cause I So here you are able to stop for a few minutes and swim in the river if you want. They will make dinner in another spot and here they always prepare like a nice bonfire you can dance they will be singing it was just perfect and the feluca was quite comfortable to sleep in so i totally recommend you to do this The next morning and after a beautiful night in the Feluca, we end up going to the nearby Edfu temple which is really cool to explore too. So you had to pay $8 in order to get in and once again in the video doesn't show how big it is but trust me this place is humongous. Take my hand I'm gonna walk you through remedy I'm gonna help you sleep tonight Kinda fierce I'm like a child without his dreams at night I wanna help you dream tonight so I said I wouldn't spend a lot of time on you A shame we'll never get to fight no. But the fire of the sun, I swear I see in you How can a man have eyes so you're going to notice here and in different temples is that the hieroglyphics have really deep scratches. The main reason of this is because when Christians were being killed and hunted by Romans, for them the only solution to survive was moving to Egypt and live inside the temples. So because they didn't believe in the same things, they didn't like the images and they were trying to erase them, but because the hieroglyphics are carved really deep into the rock, they couldn't do it completely. So. Once again, I do recommend you to hire somebody who can give you information and is a tour about this place because it's really cool to, to understand why things happen here. <laughs> ok, 
Okay guys, so this is not part of the tour, but we were lucky enough that my hotel had performers and shows every night. So I was elected to dance with a belly dancer and I cannot refuse to a dance. The other show that we were selected to dance is this, like from Turkey. I'm not too sure, but this guy was unbelievable. He was turning for more than 10 minutes non-stop. And when we tried it, we were maybe doing it for 10 seconds. We were super dizzy, so bravo! Let's clap for this guy because he is insane. After spending a couple of days in Aswan and doing a bunch of things, we're moving to the city of Luxor. We crossed the Nile River early in the morning to begin our tour in the West Bank, home to the Valley of the Kings. And our first stop here was the Colossi of Memon, which are these two massive stone statues of the Pharaoh Aminhotep III. The Colossi reached 60 feet in height and weighed an estimate of 720 tons each. You don't have to pay any money to get here and you will spend around 5 to 10 minutes at the most because there is not much to see here. Then we jump in our bus and 10 minutes later we arrive to the amazing Valley of the Kings. So the Valley of the Kings is this massive complex full of tombs and chambers in the middle of the mountain and it was the principal burial place of the major royal figures as well as privileged nobles in Egypt. In order to get in, you had to pay ten dollars and you had to buy a ticket if you want to take pictures inside of the tombs. For that, you had to pay fifteen dollars. Something that you need to get here too is the mini train because the distance that you have to walk from one entrance to another is a little bit farther away that will cost you three dollars guys this place is humongous it has 63 tombs and chambers normally what they do is that they just open three tombs per week for that reason you never know exactly which tomb you're going for to see but in general all of them are so well preserved and it has so many colors inside that it's impressive to explore them In our case, the tombs that we ended up visiting were Ramses the Seventh, Ramses the Ninth, and Ramses the Fourth, and all of them have so many details. The hieroglyphics were so colorful, but that's it. It's the only thing that you're going to see inside of the tombs. They don't have any type of gold or treasure because everything was stolen, but still really interesting to see how they were before. So guys, because the tombs are really nice and well preserved, you will be impressed. You will have the temptation of taking pictures. So what happened and something that we, we noticed is that people who didn't have the tickets were taking pictures and this guy approached to them, asked if they have it. They said no and suddenly he was, okay, so give me maybe half of what you have to pay outside or just give me a little bit of money. A few people fall into that and they give them money but normally if they catch you they will tell you okay you have to raise the picture or most of the time they will tell you okay just go and stop taking pictures and do not give them money. Something that we experienced too is that we were taking pictures in one specific area and this guy just told us okay you have to take pictures there because it's better. We tell him okay thank you and the guy right away told us okay just give me money because i told you where to take the picture so just be a little bit aware of these situations there and just ignore them <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we're visiting El Deir al Bahari, which is a huge complex of mortuary temples and tombs located on the west bank on the bottom of this nice cliff. This place is located 10 to 15 minutes away from the Valley of the Kings, and in order to get in, you had to pay $5. Now if you're going in a really sunny day, I do recommend you to take the mini train again just because the distance from where you buy the tickets to where the complex is is a little bit far and trust me, the sun here is so strong that if you decide to walk, you are going to be dead on the arrival to the complex. So in this place you're going to find the mortuary temple of Hapshetsut, the mortuary temple of Mentuhotep II, and the mortuary temple of Tutmosep III. I hope I'm pronouncing this well, but it's quite difficult just to, to try to pronounce this name, so... <laughs> and when you get in, I have a huge recommendation. Again, you're going to find somebody who is taking care that people don't take pictures inside of one area. What they do is that they will tell you do you want a picture, obviously because it's gorgeous you will say yes, they will take the picture of the tomb and obviously they will ask for a little bit of money. So you can do it yourself but they just kind of try to treat you a little bit so just be careful about that situation if you don't want to pay any more money. Now we're visiting the amazing Luxor temple and this place is phenomenal and something really cool about this place is that it's totally different compared with the rest of the temples. The reason of this is because the Luxor temple was dedicated to the rejuvenation of kingship. It may be where most of the kings were coronated. If you compare it with the rest of the temples, they used to be dedicated to the life after the death of the king. Normally you have to pay $8 in order to get in. Other nice thing about this place is that it's located in downtown Luxor. So from your hotel, the access to this place, it would be really, really easy for sure. I don't have any more words about this place other than just enjoy the view because it's amazing. Finally, we end up visiting the humongous and massive Karnak temple. This was a religious center and in order to get in you had to pay $9. So as I told you before guys, this place is so big that there is one area called the Hypostyle Hall and here you will find these 134 massive columns arranged in 16 rows. 122 of these columns are 10 meters tall and the other 12 are 21 meters tall. Each of them have an estimate of 70 tons on weight and as you can imagine this is massive. Uh, we ended up holding hands between nine people and we were able just to cover one column.
video for today guys I hope you enjoy and you like this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my adventures thank you for watching see you soon bye